thank you very much for joining us for this University of Plymouth um, International Student Open Day. The photograph that you've got in front of you is the building that we're usually in. It's the Roland Levinsky Building, a really beautiful building. So at the end of this, I recommend that when we can travel, you come visit us um, because it's an outstanding space to be in. Um, so just allow me to move on. My name's Professor Ijea Troyani. I'm the subject lead of architecture. I joined in July. And what I'm going to do today is go through just the sort of sequence of the programs. So we have one undergraduate BA architecture program, and then that has a part one accreditation. And then we have a range of master's programs and then our postgraduate research programs. Um, the work that's throughout this is by students in different years. Um, so hopefully it'll give you a flavor of the kind of things that are of interest. I wanted to just let you know our rankings as well. On the right hand side is a photograph inside the Ron Levinsky building. That's our ground floor buzzing when we're all there. So just to give you a sense of it. But in terms of our rankings, we're in the top three modern UK universities for research in architecture, the top five modern UK universities for architecture, top seven for UK universities for design. And in the latest Guardian League tables in the UK, we're in the top 19 for architecture. But I wanted to say that actually we're moving upwards. Uh, um, so I think that's a really important thing to see is that we just keep progressively advancing higher. Importantly, we're in the first class category of sustainable universities in the United Kingdom. And that's a very important agenda for us. So what I've got here on the screen are some um, images of recent competition winning work that was produced in the Master of Architecture program um, called Creative Conscience. And I've put it up there by three students, um, just one recently, 2020 competition. They graduated at the end of um, 2020. But I think it represents some of the kind of important things about us. And I wanted to talk about what we can offer you in terms of the value of your architectural education. Uh, you'll be taught by world leading academics and we're very committed to design excellence. I think a fundamental priority for us is civic minded design. So we work very collaboratively as you'll see with local and global communities as well as industry partners. And we work in a cross disciplinary space. So the Roland Levinsky building is home of art, design and architecture, um, but we, we have a sort of range of disciplines working together spatially as well as collaboratively in the programs. I think the third thing that's distinct about us is we, you can develop lifelong learning skills in environmental and socially responsible design. Um, and many of our lectures, much of our course material is very centered on that, as you'll see. Just wanted to flag up um, some of the sort of uh, alumni success that we've had. Um, so on the left are practices including Stephen Witherford, Alex de Reich, who've all won um, you know, major prizes for the ROBA. Then in terms of more recent students, um, you know, we have Grace who's had her work published in Blueprint, Design, work for Forensic Architecture in London. Um, Chelsea see work for some very large architects from Hadid Shumi Fosters, um, Amira who was the first female architect at the Ministry of Interior in Saudi Arabia, um, and Madasha who is a principal designer at M2H. That's just a flavour of them. What we've also done there is put our alumni link and that's not solely for architecture but you can skim through that and see some of the successes of the students that um, have come through the school and been nurtured. And you know to our delight they come back and some of them are joining us in the breakout rooms um, but they can have a very continued relationship as an academic community. This is to show us the staff that work in the, in the school um, in architecture. Very fortunate to have a great international spread of staff that come from 
Australia, Italy, Japan, the US, Chile, I can keep going on, obviously the UK, but we have a very international spread. And I think that's been fantastic for us because the diversity that we have in the teaching staff also manifests in where we're developing the diversity with our students as well. It's a really fundamental core strategy for the university. We're research informed design led teaching. Many of us give um, keynote talks throughout the world. This is just a smattering of where we've done it. And we also work closely with industry at the moment with the VNA and the Tate. So in terms of our programs, this is really to give you just an understanding of, um, you know, the sort of basic structure and there'll be more detail provided with each of the explanations. The BA, uh, a three year full time course with part one accreditation, the Master of Architecture with part two accreditation for two years. And then the other masters are one year full-time courses. And on your right, you can see the postgraduate research programs. Now I've suggested to Jeannie and Wilma that they send you the PPT afterwards so that you can go through this material because I realize I'm having to go through it quickly, but it will be shared with you as well. Our facilities are impressive. Um, this is a photograph of some of the spaces, we have a permanent place to work for each student, seven to midnight every day, a 3D digital lab, workshops for woodwork, metalwork, plaster casting, an impressive library, which is getting more and more material accessible online, but open 24 seven normally. We have photographic studios, dark rooms, 360 degree immersive vision theater and a cinema. What I'm going to show you next is, um, if I can just move this out of the road, just a short film that we've made about our facilities, just to give you a flavour. And as I said, because we're in a, an interdisciplinary space, you'll be able to see a range of different things made, of which architectural production of models is one. <laughs> Okay, now I would like to introduce Andy Humphreys. He's the program lead for the Bachelor of Architecture program that we have. Thank you, Ajir, and hello, everybody. Um, and I'm about to introduce the BA Architecture program. I can ask you to press the next slide, uh, Ajir, please. I'd like to talk to you about sort of uh, the program, and in a sense, we are uh, have professional accreditation with our professional bodies, with the RIBA and the ARB in the UK and we've been commended on civic responsibilities and the integration of programme and what that is about is us engaging with communities on live projects doing projects which are relevant to subject areas that are on everybody's minds today and so that students are engaging with outside communities acting in a consultation basis to come up with solutions which are relevant in going forwards and here's a sample of work across all three years can I have the next slide please <clears throat> Alongside this, we have recognition with international bodies as well. So you actually you start to become part of a school which has global recognition. You would also be pleased to know that sort of the program is 100% coursework. There are no examinations and it is made up of design studio and cat strands in history and theory, representation and practice and technology, environments and sustainability. As Ajia said, you have studio space, which is yours and a space to work seven days a week, which allows us to build up a whole community of students. Our visions and values are based on, can I have the next slide please? 
a dialogue, an invitation rather than an instruction. I, you're coming with your own agenda and we actually work with you to fulfill your potential of that agenda by working in on live industry projects that allows us to pursue issues which are relevant and meaningful as you go forwards into your careers. As a international school, we have some at summer schools that you can engage with. And as was said earlier, you are working with uh, academics who are experts in their fields of research. As I say, alongside this, you have studio space, which is yours to enable you to set up a whole community to allow you to become a global citizen. Next, please. Next, please. Our teaching and learning is based upon a, a really key aspect of peer learning, student to student, which allows you to become independent, creative, critical and strategic and also discursive as you go forward. Next, please. And from our position, the student to tutor teaching and learning is a based, based upon an open and honest dialogue that is encouraged around trust to enable you to become both agile and adaptive in one of these ever changing times, but also within these changing times to become a global citizen so we can engage across the world in what we are doing. Next, please. And, uh, and therefore, within sort of statements from external examiners, in a sense, over the last year or last year, when actually we went into lockdown, uh, 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 external examiners were saying, actually, it, they were, it didn't look like actually any interruption had occurred within the program, which is a complete credit to our amazing student community. Next, please. And now, rather than me talking about sort of the community of students, here's a short film where students are talking to you. Thank you. Next, please a real sense of community three years ago when I visited an applicant day and since then that sense has just been reinforced. Hi, I'm an international student from Malaysia and I'm currently studying architecture in Plymouth but sadly I'm not there at the moment. Originally I am from Germany but I have since graduation moved to to Spain in Seville to work at an architectural practice full time. My name is Nertha and I graduated from the University of Plymouth in 2020. My name is Tabi Sonyezi and I'm from South Africa. I was an architecture student at the University of Plymouth. Hi, I'm Corey, a third year architecture student. I'm Emily and I'm from Seychelles, which is a small group of islands in the Indian Ocean. I'm Sophie and I'm currently studying architecture at the University of Plymouth. So much of the energy of the course can be attributed to the studio. The studio is open every single day, so we could use it outside of lectures, giving us more freedom to complete our work whenever we felt comfortable to do so. When engaging with this journey in a stimulating environment that Plymouth has to offer, and through a design process that looks at it through a critical lens, has really boosted my confidence. But it's also to do with how close architecture is as a course, um, we're not just three year groups that form a cohort. We are an architecture community and an architectural family in a way. Uh, and it creates an environment where you feel safe and supported and where you're free to, to play and to experiment with ideas and challenge yourself. Opportunities such as live projects, which are my favourite type of projects, so that you can see a design flourish into a final objects that you build with your own hands which i think has been invaluable for my architectural education so far to work really collaboratively within your year and the years above and below you come a lot uh closer as a year group and learning from each other the friends i've made due to the studio culture at the university are now of course spread around the world but i i think this is the most exciting stage it's something that's shared by all of you um, and you learn how to engage in this process of working together to formulate a design uh, and you learn the richness of that. An openness and an opportunity to converse and constantly progress the line of inquiry further within individual projects. I found it really helpful to be working in the same space as the third years because I could get inspiration from what they were working on and from their projects. It allows for a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning and I feel I've learned as much from my peers as I've learned from my tutors. It's more of a two-way learning, which consists of um, constant work review, um, tutorials, and also feedbacks with our lecturers. How the studio was set up really helped the most in terms of it allowed a community of people 
And you do notice that the tutors and lecturers become family and that they really want you to do your best. And if you are struggling, they're always there to help you. The sense of community that I felt on the open day, I could see that this relationship between staff and students wasn't a hierarchical one. How willing the lecturers were to help transition you into this environment, especially being South African and coming all the way this side, 14 hours, but I felt very welcomed and I definitely felt that the University of Plymouth could be a home that I would settle in. The tutors are very real people, which allows for an exchange that's very organic and uh, relaxed. And they really care about and value each student. Had any questions, they always try to help us. And they will, they will also make us feel included, like you were part of the community even if we went from Plymouth, and they were really proactive after the COVID-19 outbreak. They would make sure that they were able to connect with us digitally, even for things that were not working. Really, really friendly. And also the studio space had amazing views over the whole city. When you were working in the studio, you really felt like you were part of the urban grain, as the studios had panoramic views all over the city. And the fact that you have the sea and the ocean, it gives you so many more opportunities to try out new things, like being able to go paddleboarding after a long day at studio to relax and chill out is honestly such a great opportunity and you're not going to get that anywhere else, really. Thank you. Next, please, Ajia. And obviously, we will talk in the breakout room much more about the portfolio uh, that's required. Next, please. But if you have any information on this, also please contact our missions tutor. And if you're liking this presentation today, please follow us on social media. I am now going to hand over to Professor Bob Brown. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Nice to speak to everybody and very glad that you could join us today. I'm going to begin where Andy has left off. And there's very clearly a message about the student being at the center of things. And I think that runs through into the Master of Architecture program as well. Master of Architecture program is something I run together with my colleague, Matt Emmett, who you'll hear from shortly when he speaks about MA Architectural Design. And the two programs run quite closely together, but I'll leave it to Matt to pick up on that a bit further. But coming back to Master of Architecture and the notion about the student being at the center, I think that's reflected in the idea of our ethos that's at the bottom of this slide. There's a number of things there about the empowering of people, which extends the idea of the civic engagement to understand that we have a sense of agency to support and enable livelihoods of people that we interact with, that we are connected to place in a number of ways, climatically, in, in particularly in issues about environment and sustainability, but also how people operate in those spaces and in the processes by which architecture is made. The legal processes, the processes of construction, but also understanding that there's an element of poetics to that. That's a pretty wide list there. And the reason that that is there is it reflects the fact that it's the students who define what happens in the Master of Architecture program. We situate the students in certain contexts, that are based around live projects, interacting with uh, clients, but it's really about the agenda that the students bring to it. So by intention, it is rather broad. And that leads me on to the next slide. We're placing an emphasis on this idea of real people, real places, real projects. There's space in architectural education for students to pursue very academic uh, inquiries that are very uh, focused on a particular set of issues. But what we're trying to do in the program is engage our students in the real world and pose them questions that I couldn't make up on my own. And in that work, we're engaging with clients, the gov local government, uh, non-government organizations, as well as other disciplines across the university in cross-disciplinary work. And central to all of this is the community that lives in those spaces. And from this, the students gather skills that are very 
important for them in terms of carrying on into future practice, notably about being discursive, about becoming leading practitioners, and about being agile. We live in an incredibly changing world. The last 10 months or so is very much evidence of that. And we need to be able to respond to a very fluid situation. And the success of that approach is reflected in the students winning prizes, already mentioned by Jaya. Uh, last year, two sets of students won silver medals in the Creative Conscious Awards. And this is actually the third year running that our students have won awards in that. And all of this is supported by the research and experience that staff bring to the learning environments with them. Carry on to the next slide, please. And I think the feedback that we have received from external examiners, from the Royal Institute of British Architects, and very significantly from the students is all testimony to this. And one of the things that I'm, I'm very happy about is commentary that recognizes the way that we have the students working together in teams. Students have the option of working individually, but they also have the option, very much like they would do in practice, of working together in a larger team. And the students find this a very fruitful experience in terms of developing skills that are very necessary as they move forward. And I think some of these comments on it that are up here from external examiners also reflect the sense of camaraderie and professionalism that's in the school. And the final quote from one of our alumni who you've already heard about, Madusha Wujasiri, uh, reflects this idea that we are a family and it's about how we come together collectively and very much placing the student at the center. I've finished now and I'll turn over to my colleague, Matt Emmett. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, my name is Matthew Emmett. I'm the program leader for the MA Architectural Design, and I also work with Bob on the MArch. Um, I'm a RIBA chartered architect, but also I have a PhD in situated cognition and experimental architecture. And that kind of combination of being professionally focused in the architectural world as well as having a strong research agenda, sort of underpins the MA architectural design. It's a one-year full-time program, and we really explore new urban forms and architectures. And this is very much in response to the changing nature of cities, buildings. We work with people, we work with environments, ecological, political, social, physical conditions that these are situated in. The programme is closely aligned with the RIBA ARB Part 2 MR studio and we work collaboratively with them. But there's a slight difference in the sense that it's a one-year programme and there's a dissertation module which takes you over the summer. So uh, the MA is not validated by the RIBA but it works closely alongside so you're benefiting from that kind of engagement. Next slide please. What to expect? The studio takes centre ground, really. It's very fast paced, it's challenging, it's exciting, and we really explore issues about uh, contemporary cities. We explore how buildings are designed and fabricated and inhabited. We look at the public realm, designing environments for people to socially engage with, and how these work within an urban landscape and a built environment. The environment is highly important to us, looking at uh, conditions of energy and sustainability, but also uh, health and welfare for the inhabitants. We do a lot of uh, workshops. Again, these are designed to help students gain these professional and creative problem solving skills, creative skills, understanding the role of research, understanding the role of interdisciplinary and how we use systems to explore, think, fabricate and technically resolve projects. And importantly, students are empowered to self-learn and identify their own trajectories and their own kind of ambitions. And as tutors, we really work and support that growth. If we go on to the next slide, please. 
the similar to the two year M arch program, the studio is the, the primary space where all of this uh, unfolds. And the student feedback is very important to us because it helps us keep the course uh, focused, up to date, but constantly evolving. And we work hand in hand with the students to help develop the course in that, in, with that in mind. We also have a uh, wonderful support from our external examiners who provide a, an external critique of our program and they're very supportive and encouraging. And as you can see here, the, uh, the notion of a student collaboration that the external examiners have identified is, is an, an excellent kind of uh, celebration of the work we do. Um, so that's the, the end of the MA Architectural Design. And what I'd like to do now is introduce Professor Catherine Willis for Smart Urban Futures. Thank you, Matt. Um, yes, so just to introduce myself, as Matt's done, I'm Catherine Willis. I'm Professor of Smart Cities and Communities. And if you just go to the previous slide, just so we could... The previous, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So the Smart Urban Futures is um, a, a new master's in the school. Um, it's a second year of running now. Um, and the, the rationale for developing this master's is an alternative option for you if you're looking at coming from a design or any sort of discipline to um, look at something that's much more future focused. Um, and we particularly focus this um, master's on students who may come from the Asian context because the smart city and um, Internet of Things are really technologies that are being widespread in uh, Asian cities. Um, India has had the uh, Modi's 100 Smart Cities programme. China has multiple smart cities um, across, across the, whole con the whole area. Um, Malaysia has, has developed smart city areas and obviously Singapore is probably known as one of the most sort of developed smart city um, agendas um, in the world really. So the Asian context has really provided really fertile ground for thinking about smart cities. But what we found from, from the long, I've been involved in research in the smart cities area for about 10 years. And what we found is that there is a real lack of students who are able to work within those agendas and work within um, both architecture practices, urban design, urban planning practices, city councils, and also in an entrepreneurial way as maybe a consultant. There's a really a lack of skills. So we're really unique in Plymouth. It's one of the first smart cities design um, programs in the world. Um, and we've developed it to address the challenge that we think is really needed of, of people with design skills, but also that can work with the exci exciting challenges of technology that, that, are, that are out there. So some of the technologies we look to integrate as part of the design process are sensors, uh, something called Internet of Things, which again is another way of talking about sensors, um, big data, we work with virtual augmented reality um, and some, some aspects of 3D fabrication. So we're really talking about a hybrid design process where we link technology and the spatial and the experiential aspects of the environment. So next slide, please. So the, the key features that you're, if, if you're interested in this program to, to think about are that this is really a future, future looking course. This is um, where we see the future of, previous slide. <laughs> we see the, fu the future of um, where uh, urban design, urban planning, architecture are, are at, um, and this will enable you to be at the forefront of that. Um, looking at it in a very broad sense, we cover um, a whole set of interesting agendas that hopefully will engage you in the course. We're looking at how you might live digitally in the future, and that encompasses all aspects of, of the urban or the spatial environment around us. So transport, health, mobility, how the city's governed, uh, particularly sustainability. So what might be the f future ways to address sustainability in, in the urban space? The way we run the course in order to address these design challenges, is we, we adopt what's called a design lab approach. And the design lab is a sort of poorer space, a design space that we work um, in conjunction with industry and some civic partners. So you're really gaining experience from working both as in, a, in, a, in the university environment with some of the, 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 the um, teachers who are really experienced in this topic. 
um, and also addressing real world challenges through um, taking this design lab approach. So we bring real world challenges from, from the world around us and working with industry partners and you'll address those in the design lab and taking forward a project. And as I mentioned, we'll, we'll give you, we don't assume any skill sets. If you're interested in these sort of technologies, we don't assume that you come with those skills. So you'll be upskilled in learning how to work with sensors, how to understand um, what virtual and augmented reality are, and also working with data. So you'll gain those skills as part of one of the modules in the first semester, and um, that'll enable you to work with them um, through the course. So what we're doing in the programme is allowing you to address um, to create solutions or address real challenges in the in the world that are, that are there now and are developing uh, in towards uh, where things are developing in the future and doing that in an innovative, entrepreneurial and socially responsible way. So we think that this will make you ready for the ready for um, an environment, get high employability. So we aim for all students who come out of the course to go to go directly into employment. Um, and into employment into an area where they would really like to be. So this isn't just taking any old job, you should be defining your career through the programme. Next slide, please. And this was just an example of one student project last year um, who developed a smart environment which allowed uh, people to see how energy was being used within uh, a community. Um, and it, was, uh, it used um, a voice interface for people to be able to talk to their building and allowed them to see how energy was transferring in what's called a smart grid. So this was obviously at a, a neighbourhood scale, a community scale. We work at the urban and we also work in terms of other ways of working with interfaces. So um, thank you for your time. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you in the breakout room and I will now pass over to my colleague um, Alejandro Feliz Reyes, who is programme leader for the MA MSc in Integrated Design Innovation and with, with whom we do co-teaching. So really pleased to um, hear some of the things he talks about. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Catherine. Um, my name is uh, Alejandro Veliz Reyes. I'm, a, I'm an architect in, in our school. I'm a lecturer in digital design and fabrication. Um, and this is a brief introduction to the integrated design innovation course. Um, this is a rather multidisciplinary course. Um, you can join the course, of course, with a background in architecture, but we run projects that really aim to understand how innovation is delivered in a very multidisciplinary perspective. So that intersects uh, certain areas like uh, robotics, digital fabrication, digital practice more broadly, product design, industrial design, as well as some projects in the area of architecture and built environment. What the course actually does um, by being very discipline agnostic, if you wish, is to help you solve a challenge from industry, is uh, aligned with other programs, is a real world challenge. You will work with real industry partners and you will prototype and develop projects as your um, project moves on throughout the semester and throughout the academic year, starting from that ideation sort of research space, moving on into that prototyping, proof of concept demonstration space, um, working in our design lab. Um, the key driver for us to design this program is precisely uh, grounded on the need to develop profess professionals which are able to move between sectors and are able to be quite keen to engage with both technical development of a series of different projects as well as creative thinking and creatively using design methods and techniques such as prototyping, co-design activities um, as part of that innovation uh, journey. Um, the course is three semesters. It includes a design lab which is the core environment where you will develop your project which is supported by one module in semester one focus on skills development uh, where you will access our facilities and technical resources and technical staff and then in semester two a design and business course which will help you build your project from a business planning perspective and allow you to potentially spin off and potentially have a much closer engagement with um, industrial frameworks of innovation delivery all that is at the end sort of wrapped up in a research dissertation that allows you to achieve that element of depth and kind of critical uh, appraisal of what 
technology and innovation means in your field of study, which is typically the summer or the, the third semester. Um, so the overall program is three semesters long. Can we go to the next slide, please? <clears throat> Um, this is not only uh, a course which is industry facing, but actually you will work and interact with a number of industry partners. What is really key to understand here is that uh, the curriculum is actually supported and part of our teaching timetable and our teaching schedule involve your interaction with industry partners and we have been really lucky to bring in a series of um, guest speakers uh, this year we're running something called the future lecture series that is bringing a series of international industry partners to talk to you about what innovation means in their own fields and how to develop different business models or how do they deliver projects within their own companies and that includes some regional companies like uh, Calvium working in AR and VR, um, but also some international guests like Cindy Spell, she facilitates the um, technology startup weekends, uh, or Tomas Diaz, he's the director of the Fab Lab in Barcelona and head of the Masters for Emerging Futures at the Institute of Advanced Architecture in Catalonia. In addition to that, um, we do have a number of uh, studentships that will be mentioned later on. However, I would like to point out that this is a scheme that allows you to co-develop projects with industry partners. So basically your master's project includes an element of industrial engagement throughout your studies, therefore um, allowing you to feed your project directly by, by the industrial context you are working on. And our industry partners to deliver projects for our general intake includes really important uh, local sort of regional names, uh, including Tom Duggan Studio. He works with the Institute of Advanced Architecture in Catalonia. Um, we are working with G Supplied. They are doing some work on the 3D printing and 3D scanning space for Rolls Royce. And as part of our own research, we also have a partnership with Epson Robotic Solutions from Germany. We were the only UK university awarded to run a project with Epson uh, Robotics uh, last year. Um, these, these initiatives are, are funded by a cultural development fund, which is part of the UK industrial strategy awarded to the Plymouth innovation ecosystem, if you wish, uh, called I Mayflower. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, and, and, and to finish, this is, um, of course, part of a broader faculty agenda to move on to the digital space and really harness the potential of industrial partnerships and, and how the teaching that we do can more efficiently uh, interact with industry and how we can feed into those discourses of kind of research and practice and design. Um, to, to achieve that, uh, one of the um, elements right of the business case that approved this, this, these courses is also the development of new and state-of-the-art digital fabrication and immersive media laboratories. These are quite um, advanced facilities. Uh, they include, of course, uh, you know, the basics, right? 3D printing and laser cutting and, and so on. Um, however, the mix of resources available to you through these facilities is quite unique to the region. This was originally uh, around five million pound business case. And here in these spaces, you can prototype <clears throat> not just your standard uh, models, but you can also work with the design of, for instance, medical devices and biocompatible materials. You can uh, utilize our long range scanners to scan a, a piece of a city, uh, or you can 3D print with wax for jewelry applications. So the, the range of applications is really diverse and is really an excellent provision, um, which includes as well the immersive media lab, which includes technologies, not just AR, uh, sorry, augmented and virtual reality, but additionally full dome immersive experiences or motion capture technologies. Um, we have capability to work with more than 200 materials, including engineering, dental or medical grade uh, prototypes. So the array of projects you can really think of is rather diverse and we have a really excellent technical uh, support in those facilities to help you move on with your projects. Um, 
So that, um, I think this is my last uh, slide. Looking forward to tell you a few more details in the breakout room, but for now we'll leave you with uh, Dr. Sara Murani to talk to you about our research programs. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alejandro. <clears throat> um, uh, good morning, everyone. So this is, um, uh, this is me. Um, I'm uh, Dr. Sana Morani. I am an associate professor in spatial practice uh, and architecture. I teach on, on the uh, MArch and uh, MA architectural design programs, but I also, with my other hat, um, I'm the deputy director for the doctoral college for the faculty. So I lead all of the postgraduate research programs across um, the arts, humanities and um, business and social sciences. So um, in architecture, we have two programs that are, that are um, research programs. And um, this is one at a master's level and one at a PhD level. The research masters, it's called RESEM. Uh, art design and architecture, and it's designed to be an interdisciplinary um, uh, type research program. It's a one year full time uh, uh, course for international students. And uh, the PhD program is a um, PhD in architecture. And both programs have a web page um, uh, on our website, which we can share with you. The full-time uh, uh, length of the PhD program is between three to four years. We usually say four years is the right kind of time because we do three-year research and then write up um, in the last, um, the dissertation in the last um, year. There are other options to people to carry out their PhD outside um, of, the, um, uh, of the country, of the UK, and we can uh, talk about those options as well. Next slide, please. Um, so how the, the entry points are exactly the same. The, the, the way we approach this is that the doctoral college, which is the main um, kind of, let's say, um, uh, uh, organization which leads on um, uh, looking after all of the applications, whether it's international or home, uh, is um, uh, responsible for that. And we receive applications four and a half months in advance of the deadlines, but we admit students to our programs over three um, different entries. So we have an October entry, a January entry, and an, an April entry. Um, we usually advise international students to come at the October entry because then they can um, go with the research skills and training program that usually starts um, in October. Now we do record all of those and everything is online but it's not the same when um, it's run live. So um, that is the kind of the best option for international students, but we can support them if they want to come into um, a different timing um, in terms of entry. Our um, research proposals are looked at through a team of research active staff. Um, and this is the research staff that you see them listed down here in the, um, uh, in the slide. We cover a range of um, research um, expertise within architecture from uh, urban uh, uh, to cities, smart cities, to um, uh, um, spatial practice, as well as uh, architecture. We have specialty in um, sustainable communities, um, digital fabrication and design, like Alejandro was just speaking about, um, urban dialogues, um, and uh, as well as politics, violence, um, and space, particularly within architecture and media, um, we have a focus on film. And this is um, Matthew and um, Ajaya, both of the, both of the agendas. So we, we kind of cover all of this. We also work together on this. So you will see people um, sharing responsibilities for supervision because um, PhD students or ResM students would be working closely with two members of staff, one as the director of studies and one as a co-supervisor, second supervisor. Usually we also, um, if we do have partners outside of um, the country who we would like to partner with, then we can uh, introduce them as uh, another supervisor to, to, the, to, to the team. And um, we work with them on um, a, a range of offers um, to support uh, the external uh, supervisors as well. Next slide, please. 
So um, what do we do? We basically have two um, different things that we offer. One is prior to the students um, applying for the course and um, the other part is when the students are with us. So prior to the students applying, we offer a suite of training, but also a kind of a, a mini program to develop their research proposals, which is usually the largest bit of um, the application process. And um, I run a, a series of summer kind of workshops where we train students on how to write research proposals, but also it helps them understand how we operate um, in terms of uh, university. Then we also run uh, surgeries across um, the period before the applications come in, uh, and those are to help students develop those proposals. We also offer training to uh, partner supervisors within institutions, and then as the students enroll, we have a training program which runs across the first year of registration where students will be trained on research skills and methodologies. And that happens across the faculty. So you will be meeting with a range of other um, disciplines and students from across the faculty. Currently, we sit at the largest number of PGR students across the faculty. We have over 460 students um, registered for a PhD. And a big chunk of that is sitting within our school. So there is a range of expertise that we can pull from, um, as well as uh, the exposure to all of those other um, uh, uh, kind of projects that are working that we have. We um, have um, a way of working with partners um, and institutions where we can see if we, if, if you would like this, we can discuss that um, uh, later on. Uh, so we can, we can, if if students come into our mini training summer programs, then there might be a way of them getting accepted um, into our um, program uh, uh, directly. Um, and it's called auto automatic acceptance. And there is also a pre a pre um, acceptance online and um, other other ways of of working into that uh, studentships and so on. Um, uh, and at that point, um, I'm happy to talk to you later on um, about further details, but I will like to hand you back to um, Professor Ajay Trigliani to complete the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sana. Um, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. I just wanted to quickly run through a few very important things for you. One is to let you know what the intake is in each of our programs, which I have listed here, and also to let you know when the start dates are for them. Something I did not flag up earlier enough is that I think we're a hidden gem within the UK university sector, in that we're quite a small school, um, which is something that we really um, value and it's important to us to not get too big because it allows us to work very closely with the students so that we can understand what your needs are. So in the BA our intake is 70 to 90. That's actually quite uncommon at the moment. UK universities are more up around the 150 to 250 getting that direction. So in that sense I think it's really interesting to think about the offer that we have. In terms of the other programs, as you can see, um, there's no intake quota, but we do have different times. And as Sana said, there are different enrollment dates for the research programs. Um, this is an important slide because it lets you know what our current fees are at the moment. And we decided to also put down what they were for 2020 as well as 2021. So you can see how we're adapting. We're very, very competitive within the market. <clears throat> and additional information down there about the research programs. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the scholarships or discounts offers that we have. So this is for the undergraduate program, which includes the BA honors in architecture, but also the master of architecture. So we offer different discounts if you come through an agent or not through an agent. Um, so if you apply, if you're not applying through an educational agent, uh, you can get a 250 pound discount off your fees. Um, if you do apply through them, it's a 
5% deduction. I know many of you have come through agents today and that's for your first year of study I'm talking about. In addition to that, if you're a full-time student and you attain a 60% grade average on completion of year one, you'll get 500 pounds off your fee for the first year. If you continue to achieve that standard of being 60% or over in your average, you'll get 500 pounds off for year two and year three. And that's paid back to you after the academic board has um, taken place. For the postgraduate programs, um, students who complete their undergraduate studies in architecture with us at Plymouth, who've graduated with a 2-1 or above, are entitled to a £4,000 international student fee reduction towards their first year. Graduates applying through an educational agent sadly can't get that alumni discount. Um, students who have not undertaken their undergraduate degree with us um, will receive a 10% deduction on the overall fee for the first year. So I'm sorry, that's a lot of information, but as I said, the PPT and the recording will be available, so please do go through it again. I just wanted to flag it up. And then returning to what Alejandro said about the, the studentships um, that we offer. So they're for the MA Surf and MA in IDI. Um, there, there's a link there that we've put in so that you can look more fully at it in detail. But what I did was quite simply cut and paste um, some important things about what, what, uh, what's, um, what it will offer. The knowledge and research in the development of a new product, service or experience. The obviously strong networking that Alejandro talked about. But in terms of the scholarship, it's £3,000 towards your course fees, plus a budget of up to £2,000 for your project fees. What's key there is that those studentships can be accessed um, in addition to the alumni discount. So I think there's a significant overall discount there that needs to be addressed. Okay, I'm sorry we've gone a little bit over time. Um, we're going to go to the breakout sessions and then I would ask that you, we're getting and then the quiz. And at the end, I'd ask if you could please return just so I can thank everyone. Um, but very much a thanks to everybody who's presented here. And I hope you enjoy the Q and A's with staff, students, alumni and current students. So thank you very much.